Welcome back. Thank you for clicking on today's video. Today we're talking about post tax analysis and the purpose for it and how to do it, all those fun things. So we are doing a post tax analysis for a chi squared today. Essentially, a post tax analysis means you want more information. So for a chi squared, you do it when you've seen that there was sufficient evidence of a relationship or an association. How do you do a post tax analysis? Now. With the post hoc analysis, you will be calculating a confidence interval to see how different two groups are. So two different populations, specifically you'll be looking at, you'll be looking at comparing two separate groups, one that is defined by one explanatory variable option, one that's defined by a second explanatory variable option. So you see you have a p hat sub 1 and a p hat sub 2 that correspond to two separate explanatory variable options. So when you make a contingency table or a two-way table, remember those are the options that are in the rows. And then you'll be using those observed counts from whatever column you're interested in. Here I have it in column 1, but it could be column 2, but they would be in the same column because it's the same option. If you take the observed count for the explanatory variable from one row and divide by the total for that row, and then similarly you take the option or the observed count for the explanatory variable in the second row and then divide by the total for that row. <clears throat> How do you interpret the interval once you've done it? Now we've interpreted uh, confidence intervals before, so you know that you have to say how confident you are, uh, your parameter, and then the interval itself. Usually these are 95% confidence intervals, so you'd say we are 95% confident that p sub one, so notice that that's not p hat, it's gonna be the parameter p sub one or the population proportion for the first group and then the population proportion for the second group. Now it tends to be the case that you'll say higher, but how do you know if you say higher or lower? It depends on if the interval is positive or if it's negative. If it's positive, you would say p sub one is between this much higher and if it's negative, you would take the negative out and say lower. Now, you have to define p sub 1 and p sub 2, and we've defined proportion, population proportion parameters before, but essentially you're going to say the proportion of, and then whatever that population is or that group for the explanatory variable 1, so the proportion of, let's say, dogs, um, and then you would talk about the trait that you're interested in comparing for the two groups. So if in that column for your observations, it was dogs that are kind to strangers, you would say proportion of dogs who are kind to strangers. And then piece of two would be the exact same thing. You would just change and instead of saying the dog, you would say the other explanatory variable option, which would maybe be cats. So proportion of cats uh, who are kind to strangers. So. Those are how you would compare or write out the two parameter definitions. You would do that before you did the interpretation. So you would actually write P1 and P2. You would write these sentences like I just stated. Um, and then you're done. You did it. You get to say how they compare to one another. So hopefully that's helpful to see the generic steps. In future videos, we'll actually do it. See you there.